in this on this quilt we're going to be working with rulers so I have put a ruler foot onto my machine it's important to know that you have the right type of foot for your machine check with your manufacturer to see if there's a ruler foot available and when you get that information find out if you need to use taller or shorter templates this is a high shank machine so I know that my ruler foot will work well with quarter inch rulers so I'm going to be using the two and a quarter inch handy quilter slice template it's just a nice little curve fits in my hand beautifully you can see that I have ruler grip on the bottom because I can actually quilt this quilt by pushing the entire quilt just with the ruler. It's going to act like gloves do for me. So to get started, make sure you have the right quilting foot for your machine and it has to be a ruler foot. If it is a regular foot, it's the wrong size and it can be too flat or oblong and it can damage your machine if you use that. So you have to use a ruler foot to use rulers. I want to stitch curves along each one of uh, these lines here, 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 and there. But I don't want the curves to go into the binding area. So I'm gonna mark the top off with quarter inch tape which will let me know where the binding area goes and whenever I get to the edge of the quilt I'm also going to mark off the side of the, of the corner at the edge of the quilt just to make sure that I don't quilt into my binding area so quarter inch tape is my friend you can mark this with a ruler and a, and a quilt marker but I can usually quilt over those lines I can ignore, ignore those quite effectively tape seems to work best for me to keep me from stitching off the quilt I'm still gonna wear my gloves to get started here and when you quilt with rulers you need to know that your needle is a quarter inch inside of this foot I'm gonna put the needle down needle up pull up the bobbin thread and put my needle back down in the corner I'm going to angle I'm going to put the ruler uh, next to the foot I'm going to hold it so it's a quarter inch away from the point where I want to end because the foot will stay with the ruler and the needle will end in the, in the corner. If you aren't confident in your quarter inch, you can always bring in a ruler to mark that. So I'm going to start stitching and I'm pushing the quilt with the pushing the ruler and the quilt next to the foot. I'm pushing the ruler in the quilt in the direction I need to stitch, but I'm also pushing the ruler down. So it's like three different ways of pressing at the same time. If you think of it like rotary cutting, it'll make more sense. So there was one curve, and now I'm gonna stitch up here. My stitches are a little big, so let me uh, make my machine go slightly faster a little bit faster. Now I'm going to curve back down. There we go. And another curve. Into the corner. Now if you haven't pressed your corners very flat, it's okay to not go all the way into the corner. It's also okay to lift your foot up a little bit, but don't lift it too much. If your foot's too high, it can cause you to break your thread and skip stitches. So I'm going to stitch back up to the center again. Yeah, that foot's just a little high. I could feel that going. And then I'm going to come back down to this bottom corner. So I've stitched around the block. What I haven't done is stitched back up to the center and back up to the corner to finish the block. And the reason I haven't done that is I don't want to finish the block. I want to continue stitching down the quilt. So I'm going to stitch around three sides of it, around three sides of it as I go down. And then I'll come back up to the top and finish it later. You'll see how that goes. 
So I'm going to continue stitching. To the center. Back up to the corner. down to the center. So if I'm this far and I find that I'm too far from the center, that I don't like where my where my ruler's positioned, that it's way too far away, I can stop right here, keep contact of the ruler and the needle, uh, uh, the ruler and the foot, and rotate it in till it's a quarter inch away. and continue around the block. down to my last piece. Keep stitching your blocks in that way until you get to the end of the row. Then stitch off the end of the quilt and we'll start again. Now that I'm at the bottom of this first row, I have put tape across the seam allowance so that I don't stitch into the border. I am going to finish quilting this block. And because I despise making knots, I'm just going to stitch into the batting cut my thread. There we go. The tape will peel right off, right where I stitched through it, so that's not a problem at all. I'm going to come back up to the top. Let me trim off those old threads. Now I can start stitching in the batting again. Stitch down to where I started the previous um, time, where I stitched three quarters of this. And now I'm only going to finish this inside of the one triangle that I haven't stitched yet. So I stitch to the middle. stitch back out. And I'm going to continue doing that all the way down this row and every row of hourglass blocks. You could start in the middle and stitch one block at a time, but I prefer to make fewer knots and stitch each of the um, entire columns of the quilt in two parts, the three-quarter side and the one-quarter side. <laughs> 